What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road Patina. Today on the show we are going to see if these LED fog lights for the Tundra are any better than these OEM halogen fog lights. I don't know, let's figure it out. Alright, well, we got one light and two lights. What else do we have? Oh, there is a couple harnesses, a couple brackets, and why? Wait. What? Instructions? I never get this with anything. That's amazing. What else we got? Oh, hardware. Look at that. Probably everything you need for an install, which is amazing. Another bracket, a couple harnesses. Looks good. These are Diode Dynamics SS3 LED SAE dot fog lights in the amber yellow color for the Toyota Tundra. So I've been doing a lot of research online. There is some forum posts about LED fog lights and which are the best. Now I'll put a link in the description box below. You can read that every post if you want. Right now there's well over 150 I think posts about it. Um, so it's very informative. You'll learn a lot about LEDs. So the requirements I wanted for the Tundra, I wanted them to be dot SAE, which means they're road legal. There's a very specific line that you can adjust down so you're not blinding people. It's not illegal to run these. You have to check with your state laws to make sure, but as far as I know, um, these are specifically designed to meet or exceed the dot requirements uh, for highway use. Now, it's very important to me because if you've ever been around anybody or in, behind, in front of a truck where they have especially yellow LED lights, I mean, they blast your face. They're, I mean, a lot of these people don't realize that they shouldn't be running these on the road. Um, those lights are just flared out. There's no cutoff line. And I mean, you can literally see people's faces yellow. And if, if you're lighting up somebody else's faces in their car yellow, they're not the right ones for the road. So these have got a lot of hype. There's a lot of interest in these. There's a pro model and a sport model. The sport is a budget friendly mo um, uh, model entry level. And this is the pro. This is gonna have a lot more light, put out a lot more power. Um, the cutoff line isn't as precise as the sport, but it does, it, it, you'll still see it. I, I'll do some videos of it on a garage, um, but it does have a lot more power output. And bonus, if you live in icy climates, this can get really warm. Not warm enough where it's gonna melt your bumper or anything, but it will uh, keep the snow and the ice to a minimum. So I'm gonna put them in see if we like them and uh yeah i'm looking forward to it let's go let's get started cut the chit chat let's go come on there's a few ways to take these out on the older trucks like 2014 to 2017 i think uh, don't quote me exactly you can just pry on this top part here and it'll pop out you can slide the whole assembly forward which is kind of scary because People can steal your nice new expensive fog lights, so I'm going to try to figure out a way to zip tie them or worm clamp them or something in place from the back so that they're not easily uh, removable. So what we're going to do, because you do have to gain access to the back to um, adjust the height, we're going to start here. So there's a couple bolts here, there's a few bolts underneath, and then there's a clip all the way back there. So what we're going to do is these ones are these ones are rough because you have to pry them carefully if you don't this is gonna the inside part there's two parts there's a liner then there's the clips and there's an inside bracket that inside bracket will break off ask me because i did it on the other one so we're gonna try to be very careful and not do this this one actually broke off i tried to epoxy it back on you can see right there, it's not, I don't know if it's gonna hold. Otherwise, if this breaks off, it's not a big deal. You can still reuse it, but you have to remove the grill again, the side piece again. Then you have to hold the bracket in place while you screw it on. So, 
really don't want to do that. So we'll hopefully the epoxy holds and we're going to be more careful on this second one. So total there should be two of these on the bottom and four of these little ones also on the bottom and that little clip on the inside and then just carefully pry this back and try to pull on it at the same time hopefully you don't hear a snap and a crack yeah we can break it Ah. Now that the plastic cover's off, you can actually see the back of the fog light. And there's just held in with a little clip on the top, and then it's also slotted in the bottom. Some of the newer ones might have a blue clip here, which you won't be able to remove the fog light from the front. You actually have to come back here. So blue clip there won't let you pull them out from the front. Once you pull the old one out, there will be one screw here. You just undo that screw, the whole fog assembly with the bracket and the adjuster will all come out. You're gonna reuse the stock bezel for this one um, and then the adjusters will be on the side of each light. I'll show you once I get it put in. The SSD3 will go right into the housing. Fits like a glove, look at that. And then the two provided hardware will go on each side and then it'll just clip in here and bolt in there there you have it look at that beautiful isn't it there it is all bolted and ready to go one screw here holds the housing to the actual bezel and then you can see the adjuster screws one on each side keep those loose for now um, Let's see, actually gives it quite a good range. Um, you're gonna get a little bit of a gap in there as you can see based on, if you push it forward all the way flush, I tried it and it actually shoots these really high. So you just have to kind of push back the light a little bit and it'll give you quite a, quite a good range. The most aggravating part of the install is going to be this wiggle. Do you see the light wiggling? Now when you're on the freeway and when you're at night, that thing will wiggle and shake and you'll see it in everybody's reflection. So I'm gonna pull this out and show you what the problem is. It's not Diode Dynamics' fault. It's actually the way Toyota designed this bezel and then the way the bracket mounts into that bezel. And I will show you an easy way to combat that jiggle. The fog light is out yet again. This is by far the most frustrating part of the install. So. The way Toyota designed this, I believe, is an inherent flaw in the actual mounting mechanism. So this is the bracket that Diode Dynamics in, provides, and it loops in and hooks into the bezel, and it bolts in here. So this is, I mean, this is exactly the same factory style. There's nothing wrong here. And I already have two zip ties here. You can see one here and one here to try to get that wiggle out. But if I hold it, I mean, you can still see it wiggles, and that wiggles enough to see in the road. I mean, it wiggles. So, pull each of these really tight. You might have to try a couple different techniques and where you want them to be zip tied. Um, I might try to go around here and maybe another one, but I, I cannot get the wiggle out of it. It's small, it's slight, but it's enough to see, especially on road signs uh, when you're going down the highway. When I am installing these, Another jiggle actually comes from the way the bezel sits. So the bezel clips in to the bumper here and here, and that's it. There's nothing holding it. So the actual bezel wiggles, and then the bracket and the light wiggles. So, first of all, I would pull this tight when aligning them from inside the bumper, 
and then figure out where you want the light and then tighten it down. Now for me, I couldn't get the Allen key in here very easily to tighten, so what I would do is pull it tight inside the bumper, figure out where I wanted it, pop the whole fog light out, tighten it. So now that I know wh where it is height wise, um, I have to put it back in the bumper, put a zip tie here, and you'll actually see there's a bracket that you can, so it'll be a big zip tie, but it'll have to go to a bracket. So you have to hold the bezel tight in the bumper, and then you have to hold the bracket tight in the bezel, and then you have to figure out how to align it up and down as well. I'll show you in the one that's already installed how I have the zip tie here to keep it stable. This is the bracket where you need to attach it to. So zip tie from the bottom of the fog light right there all the way back and around here and that'll hold it tight. That'll hold the bezel tight and then you'll have to use a couple other zip ties to hold the bracket tight to the bezel. So super frustrating but it's a known problem and it's pretty simple to uh, alleviate that wiggle. Another thing to note, if you do have that plastic, blue plastic clip on the bottom, um, chances are you probably have a color matched bumper. The chrome bumper, ooh, sorry, is the bezel just sits in there with the two clips. If you have a color matched bumper or a plastic bumper corner, you will have a bracket that attaches to that clip down here. So you may not have to use the zip tie. Uh, so you just have to check it out when you get things torn apart. And you can see the chrome bumper corner with these lights. There's no zip tie in there right now. You can actually see how much that light, that's the bezel moving around in the bumper without the zip tie. Well, now that the light's in, we have the harness. You just plug this end into the factory harness and this end into the new LED, and you fire them up. Functionality aside, I really like these aesthetically. I mean, it's all blacked out, a little bit of yellow in there. You don't have the big chrome bubble of the halogen ones. And the fit's really good too. I mean, look in here, you can see there's a little gap in there. It's really hard to see just because of the, to aim them the way I had to aim them down out of people's faces. It might be a little gap and it even mentions that in the instructions that you might get a little gap, but safety first. But I really like the way these turned out a lot. Factory, fog, halogen, non-LED on the left, and we have fire bring night to life on this side I would say there's a huge difference in output we'll have to check tonight see how it looks kitty 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 almost have some fog here tonight so I'm gonna see if I can find a place to show some fog this is just with the parking lights on and we have a beige and brown garage door and an awful street light so it's not gonna be the best rendition but there is the headlights and there's the fog lights it really lights up the sides of the road which for bad weather that's really what you want and you can see I have them adjusted just about as high as they will go without flaring past that line. You can see right over the there is kind of where I have them set. Keep in mind that the pros don't have the really sharp cutoff line that the sports do. Um, but from everything I've read and researched, the pro is a much better light with the output. So 
as long as you can keep it low it's really hard to tell too let me try to get closer to that door and see if I can do it without hitting anything or anybody let's check it out a little closer there you get a little bit better view definitely well below the cutoff line for the headlights so we shouldn't have any problem blinding any kind of oncoming traffic shouldn't probably use these every day all day long probably just in bad weather but since they're so freaking cool I might have to this is about as far in the distance as I can get I mean it's really hard to see again with all the street lights and all the light other lights flaring in here but headlights fog lights I mean it really lights up the sides of where the road will be um, that's about as much fog as I get around here so it's gonna have to do for now but two thumbs up for the diode dynamic SS3 pros for show well I'm gonna call that a success I think that was definitely worth it the lights are bright I mean freaking bright um, I haven't been able to drive around in the weather Southern California we don't get a lot of weather and we get a little bit of rain a couple times a year so overkill probably do I regret it no way I mean those things are cool just aesthetically just looking at them even with the lights off I like them so I'll comment down below later when I have a little bit more time to drive around with them at night during different fog weather whatever we get uh, don't make it to the snow very bit very much so I like them please comment like subscribe let me know what you think down below is it overkill is it too much was it a good choice I also have some links in the description below to other videos we are going to get back on the Subaru I just wanted to make a quick video of the Tundra because I got those lights in I was really pumped about them so thanks for watching and I will see you next time